Someone sent me an actual book to edit. He said his friends liked it, but he knows his friends are lying whores. This advice is specific to his story, but it applies to any fiction, uh, novels, or graphic novels. Um, the most important advice is write what you know, and uh, feel free to self-edit. And really, if you had turned off the video now, those two points would hold you, hold you, hold you, hold you over very, very well. If you have a time and place that is not native to you, then you need to do a huge amount of research. If you live 10,000 miles away from your story setting, you probably want to skip writing on that topic for your first few books. Writers do a lot of research. If you don't, it is immediately apparent. The guy who sent this story is a good writer, but he is setting the story in the American South in the 1970s. The problem is he doesn't live in America and everything about the story is wrong. Don't get me wrong, it's well written and entertaining, but everything is wrong. I can, I can fix the English spelling versus, you know, uh, American spelling and the terminology mistakes, or that you forget that American cars are left-hand drive, or that buying guns is pretty easy in the South in the 1970s. But the dialogue and the way the characters interact, that is well written, but it's all wrong. You create racial tensions that don't exist and ignore issues that would exist. I assume you learned about the South from Hollywood. Hollywood is a bunch of coastal elites who have never even been to the South. What do you think someone like Weinstein knows about the South? Hollywood and New York is all they know. They hate people of European descent with a passion that you just don't understand until you get to know some of these people. My point is, the South had a way of life that worked for them pre the Civil Rights era. People kind of kept to their own and everyone was way more friendly than the, the media portrayed them. Good fences made for good neighbors, that type of thing. The 70s were a tumultuous time with recent Supreme Court decisions. You had Nixa, Ch Nixon, China, Vietnam. There was so much going on. The era and place that you're writing about requires a ton of research. At this level or stage of your writing career, I would write a time and era I was intimately familiar with. Modern day Australia. Uh, if that's, I think that's where you're from. Save this book for a few years down the road because you can write. I mean, you're a very good writer. You will be writing for the rest of your life. Don't waste your time editing and rewriting this specific story necessarily. If you like the character, take the character, cut out the racist stuff, the gross, violent, gory stuff. Just don't limit your audience, at least right from the start. Keep in mind the character has to have a moral center, unless that is the joke, that he is some sort of comedian degenerate. I'm thinking like, um, what was that Johnny Depp thing? Oh, God, I forget who wrote it. He went to Las Vegas. Uh, Fear and Loathing? I forget who wrote it. Uh, they made it into a movie. The movie wasn't very good, but I think the book was pretty good. Um, you can't have your character go around slapping women or calling people white trash. It's a racist term. You just cannot use that kind of stuff. Uh, the hero has attributes. He has certain parameters that he must stay within to stay consistent with his character. You can't have him do things that takes him out of character. He's a private eye with a fast car and guns. He's got to be smart because he's solving puzzles. He has to be able to speak to different types of people at their level. So he's probably got to be fairly well spoken or at least able to clean up well. He also has to know some law that relates to his field. This specific story has several areas where knowledge is needed besides just the South in the 1970s. Swamp Country, the bayou, is its own sociology and ecology. you got to know a little bit about botany, race relations, what the demographics and business environment were uh, in the 1970s in the South in that specific swamp area. you got to know the music, the food, the cars, and the guns that were popular at the time. Some of the laws that relate to the story also um, that would relate to him being a private eye. Otherwise, the story feels like the writer is completely unfamiliar with the topic. Think about Dick Francis. He wrote a ton of stories about an ex-jockey who turned into a detective. He knows the subject very well and was very successful with it. I'm not saying trash the story. Just put it on hold for a few years until you have time to do the research. If you like the character, just set the story in Australia. 
it would make it easy because the audience will just visualize Crocodile Dundee or Steve Irwin. Ir Irwin? There is a uh, Terry Pratchett book that's set in the Discworld's version of Australia. It's excellent. It might be something for you to shoot for. I think it's called The Lost Continent. Other general writing tips, don't overwrite. This book could be cut in half because uh, he, the writer describes scenes from one perspective and sort of repeats it from another perspective. In this type of story, the dialogue is the most important thing. Think of Elmore Leonard. You need to self-edit this. Don't over-describe scenes that the average reader is familiar with. You're not writing a book that will stand the test of time. You're writing for an English-speaking Western audience. They're going to read this little adventure and toss it and look for the next one, hopefully by you, that you will sell to them. So you go through your story, keep the dialogue, focus on that, start cutting stuff that's redundant. Don't get fond of long run-on sentences where you make the point, comma, reinforce the point, comma, reinstate the point, period. This is the opposite of a child's school story where the kid is trying to increase the word count. Um, that's not a problem for adults. We like to, we like to run on. You want to look at the story you wrote. Pretend somebody's putting a gun to your head and tells you to cut it in half using the rules I just gave you. Absolutely focus on the dialogue and everything, all the adverbs and adjectives that are repetitive that just add to a word count without adding to the story, excise those. Um, take it down to the bare bones then have somebody read it. So there's a lot of this editing. Like I went through, I read it and edited it. And, and I'll, try to, I'll try to export this. I don't know if it'll export it with my markups on it. Hopefully it will. Um, but there's a lot more self-editing that you can read, but I, that you can do yourself. I read it. It was interesting. It was a fun book. But um, with that in mind, like, yeah, your friends, your friends tell you, your friends told you one thing that was accurate is that, yes, you're a good writer. You can write and that you should be doing this. Um, you'll be doing this for the rest of your life. Um, at least for enjoyment and hopefully I mean there's a lot of ways to sell writing online now with uh, uh, feed books has a uh, it's a software program that lets you read books on your phone kind of type of thing or on your computer and there's a bunch of different uh, places people post works and you can uh, like you let people have the first quarter or a third of the book for free and then you charge them a dollar a book or something it uh, it works out I mean it's a way to it's a way to get started okay that was the general advice so you probably want to tune out now because this is the advice specific to the story and the nitty-gritty like I said buying a gun in the south in the 1970s I think you probably just walk into a store no paperwork required though you can easily uh, check the historical accuracy of that the South, the swamp, has poor white and black people still sort of recovering from the Civil War. Um, poor blacks weren't the only ones who were wild. There were plenty of wild uh, white people who were also, you know, poor and selling uh, unlicensed booze, avoid the tax stamp type of thing. I think you've got the Italian mob in the South. You might want to do a historical fact check on that because uh, press F to doubt. The story doesn't feel authentic. There is no patois of the South. It's good, but like I said, a half of it can be cut to make it go faster. Try to make a few edits or uh, think about oh, think about trying to find a 50-plus-year-old guy who grew up in the South to um, talk to about this. He can edit it after you do some more edits to get the, the voice of the South down. You always want to write what you know, and it's like I said, it's probably better to set the story in an area that you are intimately familiar with. You got cults in the South. Well, the South is a mix. You've got Catholics, you've got various types of Christians, you've got voodoo from Haiti, um, then you've got Catholic mixed with some voodoo ideology. Cults are mainly for rich city people who are cut off from Christianity. You got the hero is talking to and having uh, sex with a dead whore in his dream, uh, but he doesn't believe in voodoo, even though he's got he's literally hearing voices from a dead girl. Uh, you can include some of the voodoo terminology because I was like I said I was into zombies obviously from the, the name and uh, the source of the zombies was Haitian, and uh, even I know that there's a lot of different types of magic. Uh, that the Haitians believe in different types, different terminology for magic. There's different houses of belief. There's different, uh, like God, not gods exactly, but archangels or higher um, deities in the in voodoo. There's a whole history 
behind it that you want to include in your story because that goes to the color of the story, the, the authentic, authentic voice of the story. Mainly, uh, write what you know, be authentic. Live, eat, and breathe the era you are in. What music, cars, or clothing, what food was prevalent at the time and place. Uh, you women are rarely gangsters. And uh, small shops in the South aren't paying protection money, probably because there's not a lot of, there was not a lot of extra cash in the 1970s South. But again, you need to do a historical check on that. The guy's from the South, and he's wearing a dress coat in the swamp. That kind of doesn't make sense. People know better. Uh, you should mix, mix some French in there. And uh, you also want to know what the flora and fauna of the swamp is. What's the mega and micro fauna? Be able to name, talk about what you're seeing. And the only way to do that is by knowing what the trees are, knowing what some of the grasses are. What are the bird calls you hear? you got to describe the plants, the trees, the birds, the snakes, the tracks of animal crossings. I mean, obviously, not all of it. Um, but you might need to know what season are you going into the swamp because the winter swamp is i've been in the swamp and actually in um the, what's it called was it town um louisiana and um the winter swamp is very very different than the summer swamp you might even get snow you also got to check the difference between alligators or crocodiles uh in in the uh winter time i believe the alligators hibernate but uh you can check on that or at least they're less active uh, you describe hunting rifles used at airports. Are they um, bolt action, single shots? Are they the World War II internal magazine 30 out sixes that were popular? That people, they were war rifles, but people also used them for hunting rifles because they fired the 30 out six, which is very very powerful. It's, you want to take a deer with a 30 out six? It's excellent. Or did they use um, an external box magazine? Are the rifles iron sights or glass scopes? You mentioned something about commies sent a rocket to space. I think Sputnik was in the late 50s, but America moon landing. I think Sputnik was like 58 and America moon landing was probably 1969 or 68. So that reference about the communist people landing people in space is kind of, is kind of um, awkward when there was a much more impressive event was the actual moon landing. Only one analogy is necessary. You don't need to repeat yourself. I think you get a scene in this kind of haunted forest where the compasses in the sun aren't trustworthy. Trustworthy, you can probably skip that because uh, it's just too far the willing suspension of disbelief. And the truth is, unless you know how to use a map, a compass, and the sun, uh, it, they're not going to be any good to you. They, I mean, they will help you focus on a fixed point and, and walk a straight line with a compass, but... Uh, in the swamp, there's no, ah, it's not like hills and mountains. That's what, the, what's what makes compasses so easy is that you can triangulate. But you have to have, you have to be able to look up and above out at something on a, diff, a distant hill. And it, you usually got to have a map. So like an amateur with a compass, it just means that you can walk in a straight line. Anyway, and there's like de declination on a compass. It's got to be set. And there's a bunch of stuff. I mean, all these things like need to be fact checked. And you got to know that. Um... Oh, okay. The, you with the with that stuff with the compass and the sun not not trustworthy. You you kind of ventured into Stephen King territory, uh, and but you didn't properly set up that you were going to go into Stephen King territory, and you had to set that up from the beginning. And actually, that reminds me of the book he wrote about. God, it was so long. It was, it was made into a movie. Oh gosh, aliens come to Earth, and there's a buried spaceship. Ah, it was this really? Oh, what was it called? And the, the main character is an alcoholic. It was green something. It was it was a great book. It was his. Well, I mean, it's about alien spaceships. You, if you look it up, and he had he had a uh, a series like that where people were kind of get lost in the woods and strange things would happen. But there was a reason to explain it. There was a spaceship that would mess with compasses or something like that. Anyway, you got to use American spellings, color, center, maneuver. Um, uh, then you had a sex scene in public that was a little weird. Like, here's the thing. Stories have tones, and the reader is coming to expect something. And you don't want to... Like, if, there is gonna be, if there's going to be graphic sex scenes, you got to kind of let the reader know up front what they're in for. Uh, oh, then there's a scene where the guy stabs somebody in the brain stem. Well, what kind of knife? Because unless it's a double-bladed, you know, uh, knives get stuck pretty easily. Because you have them stab somebody in the brain stem... And then pull the knife out instantly and stab somebody else. Well, you can take your own double-bladed knife, uh, stab it into a, a dead deer, and see how easy it is to get caught or how hard it is to pull it out. Um, it's, uh, you know, a little bit of a challenge. It's probably more likely you stab somebody 
between the vertebrae and the knife got stuck. Or at least it would take some wiggling to get it out. Necks are very, very, if you've ever tried to, you know, take a deer apart, you know how tough the, uh, the necks are. Anyway, with the supernatural stuff, you can only go so far and still be set in the real world. You got America 1970, but it's with demons. It's just too unbelievable, like, unless you set it up from the start. For example, Harry Potter had people go through a hidden doorway to let the reader know that you were entering a magic world. In Stephen King's Crouch and the Fog took the characters into an evil alternative London. In uh, Jerusalem, he wrote, Stephen King also wrote two books, or one was a story, one was a book, Jerusalem's Lot and Salem's Lot. They're two different stories, and they're both excellent. But in, I believe it was Jerusalem's Lot. It was set in maybe 1600 in the New World, and Civilized Man was fresh to that world, so it was a whole foreign setting that you kind of made things believable, that, that you could have um, a doorway into the occult. That's a great short story you should check out. Uh, you can't have demons in 1970s America without like setting it up to uh from the beginning it feels like are you writing a detective book or a supernatural thriller if it's some kind of harry potter lord of the ring you got to set it up from the start or do something like terry pratchett pick a genre to write in cut the length in half uh, oh i also think that this would be a better graphic novel than a novel uh, and then you just take the bare bones of this story Maybe set it in a fantasy Terry Pratchett universe or Dean Foster universe. You set it right from the start um, or don't get too explicit with the supernatural stuff. Uh, Indians had their religions. The American blacks had theirs. The French had a more colorful version of Catholicism. And uh, the mongrels, the mixed race people, had a mix of Christianity and voodoo. We use mile per hour, not kilometers here. We, uh, we drive on the right and sit on the left, so the stick shift is in our right hand. Our left side is against the driver's side window. We call flashlights flashlights, not torches. Hoods and trunks, not bonnets and boots. And popular liberty devices, if I'm just guessing, uh, at the time were Smith & Wesson, Colt, Remington. Derringer was a small, you know, holdout uh, device. We spell tires not tires, and we spell caliber, not caliber. I mean, you, all the spelling you got to look up. You can, There's an English spelling and there's an American spelling. But, I mean, you have a scene where the guy's driving the car, and I guess you guys drive on the wrong side of the road. Oh, no, he didn't. And you have the guy who's presumably right-handed driving, uh, but he's able to take his, his dominant hand, his right hand, out the window and shoot at the other car while he's driving. But you, in an American car, you can't do that because the right hand is towards the interior of the vehicle. He'd have to shoot left-handed while driving, which is, you know, all these things are challenging. And then you have another scene where I'm not sure if he's driving a, uh, I don't know what it is, Dodge Charger. Well, this probably came with a three-speed automatic. Uh, tremendously powerful engine, no doubt. And with different options like carburetors. And, and you can cop up the cam afterwards and the heads and stuff like that to make it more powerful. But mainly it was a carburetor and, you know, uh, probably dual exhaust. You could do a lot to the exhaust to make it more powerful. Um, or it might have had a four-speed stick shift option. But you got to keep in mind, is a car you're talking about, what, what is it? What model, what year is it? What model is it? Was it the, the four-speed stick shift or the three-speed automatic? All these things you got to keep in mind. you got to be consistent. You've got a monster in the lake eating the, the girl. But she has... Uh, three big hooks in her to tie the girl to get sacrificed for this demon uh even monsters don't want to eat hooks so you probably just want to have her tied to a rope or something you can't have the good guys slapping or wanting to slap women that is a hard no there bullets go in magazines magazines go into guns uh, you got stuff where you're confusing s bullets and cylinders and revolvers and bullets and magazines in automatics. Oh, you've got some gross-out gory stuff that is not suited to this story. It's way too far. Mutilating people is just edgy boy gross-out stuff. 
you don't want to put a girl on hooks just tired of something so the monster can just bite through a little rope or something nobody wants to hear about anyone getting mutilated you just lost half your audience they ran to the bathroom to go throw up you can make a scary a scary story a very scary story with close to zero gore uh, think of the level of gore in top fiction it is very minor dean Koontz, uh, stephen king a bunch of other writers you're able to establish a scene without almost any gore um, I'm not adding, I'm not fixing the grammars. You seem to be unfamiliar with the use of commas, or you don't like commas. Uh, make, make commas your friend. But I'm also assuming that this story will be rewritten. You either want to get very, very comfortable with commas, or use shorter sentences. And I would go for shorter sentences, because these long run-on sentences with commas... You, you just, they're just way overwritten. Like this, you've got a you've got a, a long sentence where you introduce a concept and then you reinforce it, reinforce it, reinforce it. You just just do that once, and you don't you won't need commas because you'll just have a period after like four words. Okay, you've got a lot of things. You got apartments in the South. I think you want to you want to look up um, demographics and housing in the South in the early seventies because I think small houses were more common, cabins and shacks. Um, even people that didn't might have had outhouses instead of uh, indoor plumbing, that kind of thing. They might have had wells and outhouses instead of you know hooked up to uh, plumbing lines. Uh, the South is more French and mongrel than Italian. The South is full of black folks. They don't stick out. And then you had a scene where there's a laser sight on one of the hunting rifles in the 1970s. Uh, absolute hard no on that. You got him shooting a cigarette with a rifle out of someone's hand. Absolutely not. You got to do a lot more research or write a place and area you're more familiar with or set the whole thing in a fantasy world, which might actually be for the best for this kind of story, which would be, it might be very cool. Um, rifle bullets don't leave smoking holes in the ground. If you're talking about concrete, they're probably just uh, bouncing off them. The, the lead will probably... Um, break apart if it's if it's a lead or if it has a full metal jacket like the bullets you got to know are you dealing with soft nose full metal jackets hollow points which probably fracture better semi-jacketed wad cutters you know all these bullets have different behavior they they but they don't behave like in movies like if you um take a dead deer or a dead pig um go go shoot it with a rifle and it doesn't doesn't ha nothing happens. I mean, the bullet goes. The bullet doesn't move the object it hits because it it trans it transmits its energy through the object. Um, I mean, you can do that test for yourself. Just go if you live in a safe area, <laughs> go in your backyard and go shoot a dead pig or a dead cow or something. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, okay, there's way too many Italians in this story. Nothing against Italians, but in the South, I think you're gonna have to. Uh, you got more. Um, you're gonna have to do a little bit of research on what different demographics were living where. They're more; they were more city people. Uh, you got, you have situations where black and white people are immediately hostile to each other. That's not, no, that's not. That's just Hollywood stuff. Blacks and whites were living together in the South. They didn't hate each other on sight. They might have not liked each other, but they knew how to get along with each other because they've been doing it for a long time. Not every character needs to be an exaggerated character. It's like you base these characters on what you saw on TV instead of original source material. You got Italian gangsters pulling knives. It's the 1970s in the South. People had the common pistols were Army 45s. You might have had some World War II 9mm stuff or some Russian 9mm. They, Russia had a 9mm that was like a 9mm short. Um, then you had German 9mm and probably English 9mm. Uh, Americans, revolvers, the popular ones would have been 357 and 38s. And remember, you can chamber, uh, you can put a 38 and a 357, but not vice versa because the casing's a little bit longer. Uh, 380s were a popular automatic. 25s were another popular, like a holdout gun or 22s. Um, designer drugs in the 1970s were very rare. You mostly you had heroin, cocaine, weed, and you had pills. You had, I mean, a lot of stuff was available prescription. You might have had some LSD, and I think MDMA was pretty rare, but designer drugs were not a big thing in the 70s. You have an Italian gangster story set in the French Black South. 
You got detective elements and supernatural elements, which is all very cool. And then you've got cult and gory mutilations, which is very, very few people are into gore, like that level of gore. Unless it's um, humorous gore, like core comedy. People are into that, but not not having a girl, putting a girl on a hook so she can feed her to a demon. It's like, yes, you can feed her to a demon, but she's got to be just tied to a, a pier type of thing. Like, uh, what's that Greek... Uh, myth where the guy's tied to the rocks and the bird eats his liver out or something. Anyway, there's, there's way too much going on. There's different elements. There's a lot of different stuff going on. Too much. Simple it down. Oh, Italians are not referred to as Pecker Woods or Hicks. Those are only for white people and Italians um, are, were never considered white. Italians would be refer, referred to as greasers, wops, dagos, guineas. There's a whole bunch of different words. But there's like different sub-ethnicities in, Amer- in America that it doesn't seem like you're, you're, fall- you're up on. Um, not a big deal. The dead girl Sally is a bit too much. What did I mean by that? Oh, she's a bit too much uh, deus ex machina. Is that what I mean? Got out of the machine. Uh, use the dead girl as a plot device used to skip over important steps. If she is guiding him, it sort of means that she's just going to step in when the author wants her to. If you're from Australia, just set it in Australia. <clears throat> like I said, there's too much to fix to authentically set this in the 1970s South. Consider this story a warm-up. You definitely have potential, but I think it's easier to start over with a setting that you're familiar with or that you've heavily, heavily researched, or just do it, set it in a fantasy world, which would probably be very cool. You got our hero wearing boots and a suit in the swamp. Um, they're talking in the back of a limo, and he's talking this gangster down, because the gangster's got a gun on him, and he's calming him down. He's de-escalating the situation. Then you have our hero kick him. He almost got shot after he had calmed the guy down. Uh, there's no way you would uh, probably not do that, because it shows, it shows that you're, the, the protagonist has... Uh, bad decision making abilities, and he's probably had guns on him before. Uh, you get too many, too much death defying action scenes aren't believable. I mean, it's fun to write. I know, I know, it's fun to write, but you can only have him escape death so many times. It feels like there's too much macho posturing. Okay, then the the gun stuff. Shooting is hard. Believe me, I know all about it. Uh, headshots are very difficult. Shooting cigarettes in the air or shooting cigarettes out of somebody's hand or bottles in the air is almost an impossible task. Bullets go in mags. Mags go in the butt of a gun, usually unless they go in a, you know, you know I'm talking about the receiver up front. Uh, ep- empty shell casings are flung out the receiver. Uh, you got front and rear sights in uh, most guns or in some guns hold out pistols and derringers. You might not even have any sights because they don't want and any protrusions to they want a smooth draw without anything snagging on rifles you might have glass scopes uh, no lasers uh, no laser pointers or satellite phones were in common use they might have, might have had laser sights available in the 70s but uh, you probably need an external battery pack that you power up to a backpack it's just that kind of stuff which is uh, what do they call that when it's uh, out of time uh, out of time um I'm forgetting. Um, you might have had CBs or radio phones that would relay, go to a relay station and then go to a, another network, but you didn't have satellite phones in 1970. Um, oh, Molotov cocktails don't use ethanol. It's usually not at a high enough percentage, and you'd have to distill ethanol to get it to like 200 proof or something. They just And it's just too hard to get high octane ethanol. You just use gasoline. Uh, you've got oh, the 45 automatic at the time. I believe there were two models in. Gosh, there was the there was an officer's model. And, oh, there was I think the the Colt government model was a five inch long slide. It had its own recoil method, and then Browning I think came out with the officer's model, which was four and a half inches, and it might have used the um, inertia or the blowback method. Of recoil, like different guns have different recoil methods, and there's the yeah, there's definitely a Browning and the and the uh, the uh, and the uh, Colt. I think the Colt original only held seven rounds, so you got to keep that in mind. You got to be uh, period correct, is what I'm trying to say. 
uh, and check to see what other anachronisms, that's the words I'm looking for, things that are out of time. you got to check to see what other guns were in use. Okay, you describe a hunting shotgun. That would usually, in my mind, be an over or under or an old-fashioned side-by-side set up for bird or deer or really anything with the right load. A pump shotgun is more of a weapon... Uh, not for hunting. It's very powerful, but it doesn't take somebody's head off. Buckshot just makes a dozen, I think the uh, shells are eight or nine millimeter size holes in the object. They don't, um, they will kill somebody very, very dead and cause a lot of bleeding, but they don't actually like remove somebody's head. And again, like if you're going to use um, these Liberty devices and like you're really going to use the gun often, uh, you would just want to go fire some test rounds on something like on a sandbag and you see what it does and it's like uh yeah even a shotgun on a like a sandbag you'll be surprised by how little apparent damage there is the damage is all going on internally uh, the hero's handgun is empty after in one scene in nine shots and the um <clears throat> shotgun uh, doesn't usually hold 12 shots the max i'm familiar with is like nine or ten rounds and um, I'm not sure what shotgun rounds were common in the 70s, but nowadays you can get 3-inch shells or 3.5-inch shells, and sometimes they have extra high-powered magnum shells to shoot a little bit straighter over longer distances. And so, obviously, they go in a tubular magazine below the barrel, so you can kind of visualize how many shells can fit. If you've got, three and a half, if you've got like 10 3.5-inch shells or 10 3-inch shells, well, that's 30 inches stacked nose to tail. You get the idea. I mean, you should be familiar with the devices you're talking about, is what I'm saying. And, and I mean, you can go on the internet and learn, you know, almost everything you need to learn about them. Uh, you got Italian gangsters living in the bayou. Uh, no, no, no. Italians are, they are city boys. They're uh, at, uh, not the type to live in the bayou. Uh, they like their shoes and they like to dress nice and they like to look nice. They're very, um, just not the type who are going to go out and get dirty hunting type of thing. You got heroes, anti-heroes, and assholes. Your protagonist goes around beating up women. That is not what cool guys do. Your character uh, motivation is all messed up. <laughs> the monster gets hit by a truck. I read that scene. It was cool. It was a cool action scene. You definitely wrote it well. Let it die. It makes it better if even monsters follow the rules. If a 10-wheel or an 18-wheel truck runs over something, I don't care what kind of demon you are, um, you know, a 20,000-pound truck is going to kill anything. Oh, and you can also mix in some 357s. They're more higher-powered around, and people use them as well, because a lot of times people will buy guns that the police department sell at auction. They still sell guns at auctions. So if the highway patrol was using a uh, like an 8-inch eight eight bar barrel 357, um, it was, you know, very, very accurate because of the long barrel. And so after they use it for a few years or the, the police retire, they uh, will sell the gun at auction. You can buy the gun cheap. So people would have a lot of three fifty sevens or 38, you know, snub nose, five shots, teeps, things like that. Um, you got, oh, you got these scenes of these angry white guys, uh, on the docks or in bars. That's all Hollywood lies. Um, that's just Hollywood. It's, White people are really, really nice. Um, you got cowboy boots and mustaches and stuff like that. And the thing is, white people are the friendliest group in America. And in, and I'm not, I'm not just saying this for any like, um, like bias or anything like that. I, it's just uh, in the South, people are much, much friendlier than on the coasts. And even in the coasts, white people are... You can ask all a bunch of different minorities. You can ask black folk, Asian folk, Arabs, and if they're on... If they're being honest with you, they're probably going to say, yeah, white people are pretty nice. They're the nicest people. So you got, like, all this macho posturing type stuff and this immediate hostility between groups. That's just all Hollywood stuff. That just... You gotta... Like, even now, if you go to a, a town... Depending on the size of the town, the smaller the town, the nicer people get because there's a psychology. If, if you know people, you're not going to burn people out. You're going to be very, very diplomatic because you've got to see these people often. It's only in cities, big cities, that people get weird because I mean, there's a whole psychology behind it. But anyway, the bayou is not cowboy country. The swamp is more uh, like cotton and tobacco farming. It's not ranching. Ranching is not farming. Those are two different industries and they attract two different types of people. 
So it's like swamp, uh, swamp rats, uh, probably shouldn't use that term. Swamp people, bayou people, uh, like the French influence is not the cowboy influence. That's different things. You got, uh, oh, you got these black and white interactions in bars where uh, you got white bars and black bars and types. None of that feels authentic. You can't write this type of stuff without living it or at least interviewing someone who's been there. You've got to be very, very familiar with it to feel authentic. Um, th- my point is that I think there's too much to teach you about the South. You're, like I said, you're better off write what you know. But uh, the supernatural stuff was good, but you might want to set that up right from the start. Okay, you see, I, re- I made some, had to repeat myself a few points because I'm making notes all over the place. Anyway, uh,. I hope that uh, I hope that helps. I'll try to uh, send you this file. Hopefully, it can export with the markup on it. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, guys, and uh, send me your editing if you want me to take a shot at it.